This is where he died. You must be Grace. Herr Dahlmeier. Hello. Josef. I didn't mean to startle you. I wanted you to see it. I feel him here the most, you know, more than at the castle. So, what did you want to know? Professor Barclay says your hobby is Ludwig. Yes. He was the last real king that Bavaria had. As a Bavarian and a history buff, well, that's enough to hook me right there. But there's more, right? He was a romantic, you know. A dreamer. And he was misunderstood, maligned. And... Sounds like you can relate. Me? Hell, I have it easy. At least I live in the 1990s. And not every eye in the country is on me. But... Yes, I can relate. You know about Ludwig's diary, right? Of course. How can I get my hands on it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have been trying myself for five years. They keep it locked up tight in the Royal Archives and they don't let it out. They must think it contains things that will hurt his image. They won't let anyone see it? Not ever? Only one person outside of the government ever got to see it, a biographer, Sir Richmond Chapel. He had friends among the German royals, and they let him look at it. Did you ever try to contact Chapel, pick his brain? No, and I don't believe I never thought of that. If you do and you find out anything, you must share. It's a promise. <laughs> Tell me about Ludwig. I don't know where to start. There's so much. Politically, the most significant thing about Ludwig II was that he signed over independent Bavarian statehood to Prussia in 1870. Bavaria became a part of United Germany, and Ludwig became a figurehead prince under the Prussian Kaiser. Why do you think he did that? Bavaria has been involved in the Hundred Years' War. People were tired of fighting. Russia's push to unite the German states made some amount of sense. Still, Ludwig must have had other options. At the very least, he should have negotiated better terms. So what was the real reason? He was manipulated by Bismarck. At least that's what I think anyway. What about Ludwig personally? You'll find two perspectives on Ludwig. The view the tourists get is the romantic ideal, Ludwig the tormented loner. Then there is the historian's point of view. Ludwig was plagued with guilt over his sexual orientation and was driven mad with self-loathing. But I take it you're not buying either point of view. <laughs> well, it's all too convenient, isn't it? That he was a devout Catholic, there is no question, and I'm sure there were pressures on him to be normal. But he was no prude. He loved Byron. Mm. Yes. Philosophy, the French court. If anything, Ludwig was too much an egomaniac. He didn't give a damn what anyone thought. And besides, he didn't try to hide any of his relationships. If he suffered from anything in his romantic life, it was disillusionment. No one loved him back as purely as he himself loved. Well, if it wasn't sexual guilt that tormented him, what was it? I don't know. His diary was filled with self-guilt, but I'm sure it's not about that. If I knew, I'd write my own book, set the record straight, so to speak. Have you read anything about Ludwig's midnight sleigh rides? Oh, would that have been something? To be out at night and suddenly see him sweep by with his entourage? They say the night agitated Ludwig and that being outdoors and the rushing feeling of the sleigh calmed him down. Sometimes even the sleigh wasn't enough. He would stop in some remote woods, order his servants to stay put and go wandering off by himself for hours. It drove the servants crazy. 
Tell me about Bismarck. Oh, Bismarck. He was the Prussian Kaiser's chancellor. Not a nice man. Bismarck had a reputation for learning people's weaknesses and manipulating them. It's a matter of record that he had spies on Ludwig's staff. He may even have had a henchman even closer to the king. And he was involved in the conspiracy to declare Ludwig insane. Did you find out anything about the Black Wolf? No, I did. I'd read about him before, but I hadn't realized that was who you were talking about. His name was Godin, Paul Godin. I found a reference to his being called the Black Wolf after you telephoned. I've never heard of him. Who was he? Godin lived on the fringes of the Prussian court. He was handsome, charming, dangerous, or so they say. He was variously rumored to have been a foreign prince, a Prussian spy, even an assassin. Since you were interested in him, I found out some things that are probably true. It said he came from abroad in the mid-1800s, but claimed high German blood. Do you know where he came from? Uh, no. And he was ruthlessly ambitious. He probably found out who held the power, Bismarck, and offered his services. Bismarck was a good judge of talent, of that sort anyway. What else do you know about Godin? He must have done something remarkable. Bismarck was not a generous man. He liked to string people along with promises, but rarely came through. He did for Godin, though. He gave him a royal title and lands in 1863. And that was the last reference I found to him. Well, how could he just disappear? Uh, it's not that unusual. Back then, when you were given a title, you usually changed your name and moved to a place where no one knew your past, so you could act with impunity or be a pompous ass and get away with it. <laughs> Is there any way to find out what Godin was called after he got his title? Is it that critical? It might be. Well, you could send away for a copy of the entitlement deed, assuming it has destroyed during one of the wars. Godin's new name would be on it. But you would need a research permit from the government to access those records, and they can be very hard to get. A lot of red tape. Great. What do you know about Ludwig's hunting accident? A couple of years ago, I was introduced to this great old man, a real old world farmer. Well, his grandfather was Richard Horning, Ludwig's equestrian. Oh. He told some great Ludwig stories. Sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> anyway, he said that after the hunting accident, Ludwig got terribly ill, that he had a fever and was acting crazy. They were afraid that the wolf had been carrying a disease or that the bite had gone septic. A wolf bit him? Yes, yeah, it's not so unusual. There were a lot of wolves in the Alps back then. The servants were really worried, but Ludwig recovered, physically anyway. Horning's grandfather said it was the fever that broke Ludwig's mind, that he was worse than ever after that. What do you mean Ludwig got worse after the accident? Ludwig always had been a very private person. But after the accident, he got darker, more crazy. Towards the end, he was even forcing his servants to enter his chambers bent over so they couldn't see his face. Horning's grandfather said his temper was fearsome. He would fly into a rage at the least mistake. I must have been terrified of Yes, him. well. Horning's grandfather felt sorry for Ludwig, and Ludwig hated his own violence. He was always giving gifts to his servants to apologize. You mentioned that there were other reasons why Ludwig's servants feared him. Ah, that's another of Horning's mysteries. There's a story about Neuschwanstein. Apparently, there was a period of time of two or three months when Wagner would come and visit him. Wagner? There. Yeah. The two would lock themselves in the singer's hall. Horning's grandfather said the sounds that came from there were awful. Well, the servants had superstitious minds anyway. Some of them quit over it, just walked away. What kind of sounds? Horning's grandfather called them heartbreaking and ungodly. Maybe it was Wagner trying to sing. <laughs> Well, I guess that's all for now. Thanks for your help. It's my pleasure. 
And if you ever want to talk again, mm -hmm. just give me a call. I'll meet you down. I will. Thanks. Servus. Well, bye. <laughs> This is where they found Ludwig's body. I wonder what it felt like under there. I wonder what it... Professor, you know about Tell me. What? Tell me. Did you find What else? Sir? What do you mean? You mentioned. Well. Uh... This is where they found Ludwig's body. I wonder what it felt like under there. It's a memorial chapel for Ludwig. It's a memorial. Gerda? Yes? Gerda, do you have any idea where I could get a government research permit? I don't have time for a lot of red tape. You should ask Herr Übergrau. He can maybe get such things very fast. You think? I was going to write Gabriel today anyway. I should get a letter off to Gabriel. I need to include a note to Ubergrau about the research permit.
Hallo, Bertel München. Hi, I have a book of yours on Ludwig II. The author's name is Sir Richmond Chapel. Yes, how can I help you? Well, I'm doing some research on Ludwig, and I was hoping you could get me in contact with the author. I'm afraid Sir Richmond Chapel is deceased. Oh. However, his son is living. Oh. Well, is there any way you can put me in touch with him? And who are you doing this research for? Well, I'm working with Professor Barclay from Yale University. Mm. All right. Thomas Chapel's number in England is 41... 20 555 771. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Goodbye. Bye. Capital Residence. Hi, uh, my name is Grace Nakamura. I'm calling from Rittersburg, Germany. Is Thomas Chapel there, please? Speaking. What may I do for you, Miss Nakamura? This is going to sound crazy, but I have a copy of your father's biography on Ludwig II. I understand he had access to Ludwig's diary. Yes. Well, oh God, I'm not even sure. How... He didn't make a copy of it or anything, did he? Or perhaps he took good notes? He wrote down a complete translation in English. He said he couldn't uh, make headway with the German version. Ludwig's handwriting was rather broke, you know. He wrote down an English translation. Do you still have it? Well, unfortunately, my father was allowed to see the diary only on the grounds that uh, he wouldn't publish the entire work. I can't let you see it. Have you tried contacting the National Archive? No, I don't have the kinds of connections your father did, or the time. That's unfortunate, but I really cannot let it out of my hands. I understand. It was just a shot in the dark. Very well. The best of luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Chapel. My letter to the great I don't Danke. Bitte. Gibt's das denn die Lilienblühen schon? Sehr schön. Ja, aber es ist doch noch so kalt. Für Sie ein Geschenk von der Madonna? Oh, no. Nehmen Sie sie ruhig. Heute Nacht wird es kalt und sie wird sowieso erfrieren. Thank you.
It was nice of. It was nice of Father Getz to give me one of the lilies. trying to figure out what you want me to do, but I need more information to work with. If you can send any my way, I'd appreciate it. Grace. Hello, Frau Gelde. Haben Sie etwas für mich? Ja, ein Fax. Ein sehr langes Fax. Das ist aber nicht vom Schattenjäger. Ist okay. Danke schön. Thomas Chapel. Oh. 11th June 1872. Louis has convinced me to think matters through more thoroughly before I act. A trip it shall be then, to Shahin. It shall not alter my purpose, I feel, nor shall his compelling. The treaty is the ruin of my beloved Bavaria and my... 3rd July... 5th January... 30th August... 10th September... 12th December... 10th June... 2nd August... April 18... 10th October... Schloss Ritter.
Have you heard of Ludwig's diary? Yes, but uh, no one is allowed to see it. It just so happens that I have a copy of an English translation right here. There's something I wanted to show you. Read this one. August, Achtenstein, Achsik. The experiments go better and better. They has proved as loyal and determined as ever. It remains only to put the finishing touches on the completed opera to make up the diagram for the crystal. My God! Wait, I want to show you something. I am not supposed to have looked at this myself, but uh, <laughs> I am here alone all day, so... <laughs> July 1881, Richard returned from his meeting with the king. Never have I seen him so pale. I was concerned for his heart. He would not speak with me, but immediately shut himself up in his study and started working on a new project. He will not tell me the first thing about it. He will only say that it was time he repaid his king. It confirms Ludwig's diary. He wasn't crazy. Yes, but Ludwig says that the opera was completed. Imagine that, completed! There's something else. August 1882. We had a messenger tonight from the king. He brought a letter which Richard burnt. I did manage to see a bit of it. It said something about a great night in Munich and that it would be Richard's supreme triumph and someone else's destruction. Ludwig then wrote that even though he himself would probably die, his immortal soul would be freed thanks to Richard. I worry for poor Ludwig and for us. Where will we be if his madness continues? Surely someone will put an end to it. Wow. There's one more. May 1883. I sent Richard's sealed package to the king as he instructed moments before he closed his eyes forever. I could not even bring myself to care what was in it. What could it matter now? Whatever it is, I hope it brings the king good memories of Richard. He did so much for my beloved. The package. <laughs> she sounds delightful. I'd love to meet her. Oh, she's a hoot, all right. Just pretend you don't have a penis around and you'll be fine. <laughs> Got this inborn need to rip them off. Now I'm really intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> this one time, <laughs> I'd gone off to this, uh, well, party, you might say. <laughs> and it was getting a bit hairy. Well, Gracie. Oh. <laughs> Better. Come here, Clara. Betta does not speak English, but then she has her own methods of communication. I should leave you two kids alone. Oh, don't be silly.
<laughs> Friedrich, I can't just, I can't just take your date. Why not? I didn't expect her tonight. And for some reason I don't find myself in that mood. Besides, from what you've told me, you live like a monk down south at that castle. Your body needs some attention. Detta. Tag ihm sein Schlafzimmer.